Good morning, Broadway Presbyterian Church. Welcome to worship with us in our beautiful building on this beautiful Sunday morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Let us know that you joined us. Shoot us a line. Uh, let us know any prayer requests you have. Let us know how we can be caring for you and your loved ones would be great. Uh, I hope and I pray that this worship service is uplifting and encouraging as well as instructional and hopefully as well as as pushing us to grow deeper in love with the Lord and more in line with service of our God as we look at what does it mean, what is this journey that we go on with our God. As far as announcements, uh, next week I believe that we will have the uh, installation of our new class of elders, which is very exciting as we move into this new year with new leadership. So pray for them and encourage them, please as we as they lead uh this body in this interesting time uh besides that continue to lift up in prayer our country please uh, as there are still rippling effects from what happened on wednesday january the 6th and there's still questions there's still frustration so please be in prayer for our country for unity uh for the light of god to shine in a bright and strong way in our world um I don't have any other announcements. Uh, prayer requests, continue to look at the bulletin and lift those individuals up in prayer. We continue to pray for Julie, uh, for her strength and recovery. We pray for Liz and Dwayne and all other individuals who are on our prayer list. Uh, so lift each other up in prayer, reach out to one another. And at this time, would we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this day? in body or in spirit for the call to worship. Let us come together as one body to worship our Lord. The one who is not just the destination, but also the journey. Let us seek to know and trust the one who fulfills all of our needs on this journey. Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, the good teacher, the fulfillment of the prophets, and the Son of God, let us grow in understanding of our God along this journey. The Holy Spirit, who bids us to listen and follow her wise counsel. Let us grow in faith for the only one worthy of our trust. God proves throughout time that our Heavenly Father is the only being worthy of our trust. So let us hear the call of the Holy Trinity of Father, Son, and Spirit who guide us to full and complete life. Let, Let us, us worship, worship God. God. Let us pray. You invite us, O God, to live in your ways and to give us to each other to know and to love as we journey in this life. Show us your will for all creation. Help us to listen to your urgings with prayerful hearts so that we may honor what you have made in the name of the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join us in our hymn, As With 
gladness, men of old. Friends, Scripture is clear that as we travel on this road of life, the steps that we take should be in line with the will of God, knowing that we go astray and leave our true path in sin. Let us confess our sins to God and each other. Please pray with me our words of corporate confession, which are printed in your bulletin, followed by a time of silent confession. Let us pray. Almighty God, you not only call us to go on this journey of life with you, but you tell us that life with you is the journey. However, in sin we choose other paths. Forgive us of our misdirection. You tell us that you alone are the one we are to trust, but we put our faith in other people and things. Forgive us of our lack of confidence in you. You have demonstrated that you are our, our source of wisdom, but we look to ourselves instead. Forgive us of our pride. You tell us that you are our perfect sacrifice and that we are made whole in you, yet we dwell in guilt. Forgive us for limiting what you have done for us. Have mercy on us and have patience with us as we learn to travel this journey of life with you and for you. Amen.
sisters and brothers, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the light. And those who put their trust in him, who travel the road with him, also enter the gates of heaven with him. The one whose grace is sufficient for us. So believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. Loving God, open our hearts and minds to your message this day and send your spirit to illuminate your word for us. Open our eyes to see you and our hearts, minds, and ears so that we may hear you. Teach us to know your path as we follow along this journey with you, for you, and through you. May the words spoken and the meditation of all our hearts be ever pleasing to you our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. I will be reading from the Old Testament, Genesis 28, verses 10 through 17. This is the story of Jacob's dream. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head, and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all of the families of earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldiers of the cross. Every run goes higher, higher. Every run goes Higher, higher, every rung goes higher, higher, soldiers of the cross. Sinners, do you love your Jesus? Sinners, do you love your Jesus? Sinners, do you love your Jesus? Soldiers of the cross. If you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, 
Why not serve him, soldiers of the cross? Do you remember this story or the Disney movie Pinocchio? Where the puppet wants to be a real boy. But when he's made a real boy, I mean, things go terribly, terribly wrong. Probably because Pinocchio's job, his role, is not to be away from the puppeteer. Or even really to be just with the puppeteer, but his life is filled when he is connected to the puppeteer. Or there's other cartoons, right, like Mickey Mouse, where his glove pops off and it dances around and it's talking with its thumb, right, but it's a white one. Now, of course, these are, these are stories, these are fictional images. But these stories can also teach us a pretty powerful lesson. A glove is created for one thing, and that's to keep the hand warm and protected. Right? But if a glove focuses on its destination to, just to go keep things warm or just to pick things up or whatever else it's told to do, but it's not connected to the hand, what, what good does the glove do? If a puppet wanted freedom and left the puppeteer, it would become useless, like a glove away from a hand is useless. Even if the glove knows about the hand, they know how they work, they know what they look like, they can know all the anatomy, all the biology of a human hand. Or a puppet can know what a puppeteer is, who they are, what they like to do, everything about the puppeteer. They can know what their destination, they can know what their job is supposed to be. The, blood, the glove can know that its role is to be with the hand and to pick things up. The puppet can know its role is to entertain. But if they leave their purpose, they're useless. If the glove leaves the hand, it now cannot perform what it was made for. Friends, that is who we are. We were created for a purpose. We were created not just for a destination, but to journey with the one who created with us. If we leave the hand, we become useless. We are made to be in relationship with the hand that created us. It isn't about the destination, it's about the connection, it's about the relationship, it's about the journey. The hand is the journey, the glove doesn't know what to pick up without being connected to a hand. The puppet doesn't know how to entertain if it isn't connected to a puppeteer. You see, folks, God is not just a destination or a goal for us to achieve. God is the journey. This week, we're going to jump back to John again, and then we're going to jump back to Mark, and we're going to go on this journey with Jesus as we go through Mark for the foreseeable future. But for now... We're going to look at John to see what is this journey that we partake in. Our passage for today is John 1, 35 through 51. It says, The next day John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, there is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who had heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida 
the town of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So it starts out again with John the baptizer, who we've talked about over the last few weeks. Even in, And he had, John, as we said, had a tremendous following. Even much later in the New Testament in Acts, Paul comes across some of John's still followers, still disciples, and he converts them to following Jesus instead of following John the baptizer's teaching. So with interactions like that, who is your puppeteer? Who is your hand? Like we talked about last week with the situation surrounding Wednesday, January the 6th, or if we talk about any multitude of issues in the world or in our country where the root of the problem is that people put too much trust in any one person or any one institution. This is not who we're supposed to be following. As Paul pointed out to John's disciples later, you're supposed to be following Jesus, not another prophet or whatever else. Because we have one Lord who shows us and teaches us how we are to live. We have one hand that makes us work the way that we should. Others just don't fit. Even a good man, a prophet like John, is not the one to follow. We are to follow Christ. Not one pastor, not one politician, not one, not one, except Jesus. Jesus. See, John has a powerful following, as we said last week, and he was the prophet who had been expected for 400 years. When Jesus came to be baptized by John, John says, Behold the Lamb of God, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. And now a couple days later, Jesus walks by. John has a couple of his disciples standing with him, and he says, There is the Lamb of God. John says, Don't follow me. Follow the Lamb of God. So those two start following Jesus. And they start following behind him. And Jesus, who throughout John's gospel has some really, really long discourses, some really long talks. So he, in this case, he asks a really deep question. Jesus says, what do you want? Some translations make it a little bit deeper, right? A little bit more Christ-like and say, what do you seek? So the first question Jesus asked the first people who follow him, who will be following him for the next three years and then continuing the gospel into the far reaches of the world, his first disciples, he asked them, what do you want? Or, if you prefer, what do you seek? What is it that you're looking for? These two former John disciples, they respond, well, uh, where are you staying? Jesus responds, eh, come and see. One of those two is Andrew, who's Simon Peter's brother. The other one, people think it might have been the, the disciple who Jesus loved, who's John, who wrote this gospel. But whoever it was, these two disciples of John the Baptist have their teachers say, no, follow that one. And they go. So Jesus gets two new disciples stolen from John the Baptist, or John the Baptist gave them to him. Andrew, then after being told, being told that is the Lamb of God, and calling Jesus rabbi or teacher, 
He wants to share this good news. He wants to tell others about this journey that he has just started on. He doesn't go out and experience the journey for a while and then want to share the good news. No, no, no. He wants people to share with him at the very beginning of this journey. So he goes to the person who matters most to him. He goes to his brother, Simon. And he tells him, we have found the, uh, the Messiah. We have found the anointed one. Sounds like hide and seek. Like, found you. And it's interesting because the word that is used here in the Greek more literally means to carry him. Not just be like, hey, you should come check this out. But Andrew literally carried or probably urged Simon to go. I mean, I can see Peter or Simon, Simon Peter, who gets caught up in the moment a lot throughout the Bible. Like at the Transfiguration, they're on the mountain. Peter wants to pitch a bunch of tents to hang out and stay there. And I can see him in the middle of something, I don't know, getting ready to go fishing or maybe fishing or maybe making some biscuits or something. But his brother runs in excitedly and pretty well drags him to Jesus. Do we get that excited and drag people to Jesus, even at the start of our journey? Well, Simon Peter shows up. I would think not really excited at that time because he's been interrupted and he was basically carried to Jesus. But he gets there and Jesus says, Simon, from now on, you'll be Cephas, which is translated as Peter, which is translated as rock. It's actually translated as little rock. I always wonder how people respond to having their names changed, right? Somebody just comes up and says, you are no longer Jake. You are now Bob. If it was God doing it, it might be different, but he just met Jesus. But I always wonder how he responds to this. Like, like a rock, like I don't move. Hopefully not a rock like you're calling me like a dumb as a box of rocks. But probably more likely is that it's based on what Matthew 18, what Matthew writes in Matthew 18, where Jesus calls Peter the rock and says, on this rock, I will build my church. As in, you are the foundation of this church. So that's three disciples pretty quick. And those are more like discoveries of Jesus. Jesus hasn't gone out and pointed to anybody else yet and said, follow me, at least not in this gospel. So next, Jesus moves on. He sees Philip, and this is the first one that Jesus says, hey, Philip, come and follow me. And Philip, after that encounter, like Andrew, goes and finds somebody else. He goes up to Nathaniel. And he really pours it on because he says, Nathaniel, this is the one that Moses talked about in the book of the law. I have found the one that the prophet spoke about. He's the son of Joseph. He's from Nazareth. Nathaniel's like, Nazareth? Nothing good comes out of Nazareth. Put in there whatever analogy you want of whatever place. I dare not make up one right now. For me growing up, it was Buena Vista. I'm just going to leave it at that. But then Philip says, hey, just come and see. Like what Jesus said to the first two. Man, just come and see for yourself. And then Jesus sees Nathanael coming. And he says, here comes a, a, an Israelite with no deceit, with no treachery. Nathanael's like, how did you know me? Jesus said, I saw you before Philip even went to you, sitting beneath the fig tree. And Nathanael's like, holy smokes. Teacher, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Like Jesus did a crazy card trick and it blew his mind. Jesus simply says, Jake's translation, you ain't seen nothing yet. This is simply the start of the journey. Philip says, come and see. Nathaniel gets a glimpse and Jesus says, you haven't seen anything yet. Now, many people would stop and ask, but Jesus, what is this journey that we are going on that we are just starting on? Where are we even going? Much less, how do we get there? Well, that question is asked a few years later by Thomas in John chapter 14, where Jesus says, you know the way to where I'm going. And Thomas is like, no, we don't. We don't even know where you're going, much less know how in the world to get there. 
And Jesus says, I am the way. Jesus is not just leading a journey. Jesus doesn't leave a road map because Jesus is the map. The puppet maker doesn't say, go and entertain. The hand doesn't tell the glove, hey, go out there and keep things warm. The puppet maker goes with the puppet. That is the journey. The hand goes with the glove. That is the journey. Jesus goes with us and in us and acts through us. That is our journey. Now when Jesus tells Nathanael, you will see greater things than this, that you will see the heavens open and angels descending and ascending on the Son of Man. Nathanael, you haven't seen a thing yet. But the thing is that that image that Jesus paints has been seen before. It was seen by Jacob in our Old Testament passage, where Jacob, whose name is also changed, like Simon is changed to Peter, like Saul later is changed to Paul, like if we go back to the beginning, Abram turns into Abraham. Jacob eventually becomes Israel, who is the namesake for the nation of Israel. And as he's traveling, he goes to sleep with his head on a rock. I would think I would not sleep with my head on a rock, and it would probably be nightmares if I did dream. But he has a crazy dream. And this dream is angels ascending and descending on a giant ladder or a giant staircase. And God stands behind him, beside him and says, All these lands I will give to you and your descendants. You will multiply, you will be blessed, and you will bless all families through this. And God shows him the gateway to heaven where heaven and earth are connected by this ladder or this staircase. That ladder where angels are ascending and descending on it. Then comes Jesus, shocks and astounds Nathaniel and says, Nathaniel, you will see greater things than this. You will see the heavens open and angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. You see, folks, Jesus is that ladder that Jacob sees in his dream, that staircase that connects heaven and earth. Jesus is the gates of heaven. Jesus is the one who came down from heaven in order to bridge that gap, to tear that curtain between the two worlds. This is who they are journeying with. This is who we are journeying with. This is the hand. This is the puppeteer. This is the journey. The very gates of heaven that join the heavenly realms with ours. This is our journey. This is who we are. This is what we've been called on. That is who we have been called to follow. The very path to heaven, the journey to salvation, the path that is real life that put on flesh so that we can truly see and know and experience what this journey is. And each encounter that each of these folks have with Jesus gives another view, another dimension of who this is, of what this journey is and who it is that we journey with. Lamb of God, rabbi, teacher, messiah. The one who Moses talked about in the law and then the one that the prophets talked about. The king of Israel. The very son of God. The one who teaches. The one who saves. The one who sacrifices. The one who will rule. The one who is the fulfillment of the prophecies and the laws of God. The culmination of all things. The culmination of human learning and wisdom and power. This all-encompassing one is who calls these disciples on this journey. The one who calls us on this journey. Who else could we possibly put our trust and our faith in? What institution, what one human being could we look to who can fill this? Now friends, some point us to Jesus. For others, Jesus finds us. For some, we think there's no way anything good can come out of that, like Nathaniel thinking of uh, Nazareth. For others, they need to get drug on this journey, like Simon. For others, they see and they instantly recognize the Son of God. Friends, come and see, and you will see greater things than this. But to see, we must come. We must go on this journey, however this journey starts. We must step out of our comfort zones. 
as Simon was dragged, as Nathaniel doubted, we must step out and leave behind what we knew before and come and see. To always be ready for something new because throughout this time, throughout our lives, God will continually show us new things as we journey with him. And it's not a destination, it's not a goal. This is not just knowing facts and showing up to church. So those things are very good and they're helpful on this journey. So please show up to church or tune in. But this is more than that. This is living life with Christ. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. When the disciples said, we don't know where to go because we don't know where you're going. Jesus says, I am the way. Jesus is the ladder. Jesus is the one who we travel with on the road of life and who opens the door to the heavenly realms in life and in death. Folks, Jesus is the journey. This is who we go with and works in us. The one who says there is no roadmap where I can just explain for you where to go because I am the way. Following me is the path. The rest is simply details. The puppeteer who makes uh, the puppet move. Not just turn it loose and let it get into trouble, like Pinocchio. The hand that makes the glove so that that glove will fit perfectly into that hand. Instead of focusing on the detail, instead of trusting in, in systems and in institutions, Jesus is our path. Jesus is who we follow. Jesus is the gate. Jesus is the ladder. There is none, none but Christ. So as we go out, let us make sure that we are putting our faith in the only one that we can truly trust, the Lamb of God, Rabbi, Messiah, King of Israel, Son of God. What else could we put our trust in? Let us seek to journey with the one who is the journey. As Jesus asks, what do you want? What do you seek? We all seek something to fill up our glove. Pinocchio searched for something to bring him real life. And there's only one hand that was supposed to fill us and lead us and go through this journey with us. Let us not abandon the puppet maker. Let us not abandon the hand that created us and that we are designed to be in relationship with. Not just live for, not just learn about, but truly live life with God inside of us, molding us into the people we are meant to be. And as John pointed to the Lamb of God and those disciples followed him instead of clinging to the teacher, as uh, Philip went and go get Nathaniel, as Andrew went and got Simon, let us also go and call other people to just come and see. Just come and see. That's all that we ask. If our lives are truly called, let us just go to friends. Say, friend, just come and see. Because the bottom line is that none of us have seen anything yet. But if we give it a shot, and if we bid others to give it a shot, we will see angels ascending and descending on Jesus as we journey with him in this life and in the next. This rabbi, this Messiah, Lamb of God, King of Israel, this is the very Son of God. That is our journey. Come and see. Let us pray. Almighty God, Lord, we thank you that you're not just a God who just gives us a road map and says, good luck. That you're a God who says, no, come and see. As everything in our world is unknown, but the thing that we know is that you're a God of love who says that you are our journey. Enable us to put our trust in you and you alone. And help us to call others to come and see. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this opportunity to speak and to live in a place where we are free to do so. Grace Scholar, thank you for this day. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Friends, please stand in body or in spirit to say what we believe.
using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join with me in prayer. Most heavenly and wonderful and merciful God, Lord, we come before you humbly, knowing that we are not deserving of anything in this life. We are not deserving to come and call upon you. But we pray earnestly that you would hear our requests and fulfill them through your will and your power. Lord, let us have strength. Let us have confidence in the power of prayer. Let us all be praying people where we can get on our knees and beseech the God of the universe. Lord, we thank you that through your son, we have the opportunity as that curtain was torn, as that ladder descended, joining heaven and earth where we can come to you boldly with our requests and our petitions. Gracious God, we lift up all the prayer requests of our congregation here at Broadway Presbyterian Church. Lord, we lift up Julie that you continue to heal her. Lord, we pray for Dwayne and Liz we pray for all the prayer requests that are in our bulletin and all the prayers that are said and unsaid. Lord, we lift up all those who continue to mourn that you would bring them peace. Lord, we pray for all those out there who are shut-ins now and more isolated than ever before. As this pandemic continues to draw on, I pray that you would bring them comfort, that you'd bring them peace, that you'd wrap your loving arms around them and let them know that they are not alone. Lord, we lift up also all the other congregations in the Broadway area. Lord, today specifically, Lord, I lift up uh, Sunset Drive. Lord, that you use that church as an instrument of your peace. That whatever is going on there, Lord, that you would instill upon them your wisdom and your peace and your comfort. I pray for all the other congregations in the area. All of those in the Broadway Timberville Ministerial Association, that you would continue to let each and every body know that they are not in isolated entities, but that they are a big part of something bigger and that we could all reach out into our communities together. Gracious God, we lift up all those who in this time do not have roofs over their heads or food in their bellies, that you would feed them and that you would protect them. Lord, pray for all the, the local churches and uh, for open doors, that it would continue to keep people warm even in this pandemic time as it makes things trickier. We also lift up Watts, the other homeless shelter up in the Winchester area, that you would do the same for them, Lord. Lord, we pray for all of our service members at home and abroad. Lord, pray for a time in which we would not need to pray for them because there would be no more war. Lord, we also lift up our country in this time. Lord, as we seem more divided than at least I've seen before, I dare to say any of us have seen before, in all the hate spewed and all the violence and all the just division and name calling and making people out to be others instead of being other human beings. Lord, I pray for unity, Lord, I pray for calmer minds, I pray for rational minds. Lord, I pray for all of us 
to see who it is that we are supposed to put our trust in. That if we're putting our, our trust in one system or in one individual or on one party or on one whatever, then that thing will let us down. Help us to know that government should be here to support us and should be used as servants of you in order to serve those who they govern. But they are not our source. Gracious God, we lift up all the prayers said and unsaid. And Lord, help us to continue to celebrate with one another. Help us to continue to love one another. Help us to seed sow, to seed, sow seeds of love and of peace. Help us to go out into this world and to serve you and to proclaim you and to bid others to come and see. We love you, Lord Jesus. It's in the precious name of Christ that we pray. Amen. At this time, would our ushers come forward to collect our tithes and our offerings? Most Almighty God, Lord, thank you for all the gifts you've given us, all those seen and unseen. But thank you for what you've bestowed upon us in our beautiful place of worship, that our doors may be open again soon. Lord, we pray thank you for the gifts that have helped to sustain this building and the ministry that goes out from this building into your world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen. family in Christ, as we continue down this path of life, let us remember that Jesus is not simply the destination, that Jesus is the path itself. Let us take hold of faith and in confidence remember that God is the one and only reliable source of faith. Let us stand firm in that faith and love others through the strength, grace, and mercy of of our God. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen and amen. I love you all dearly. Please let me know how we can be in service to you. Take care. Bye-bye.